If you have benefited from resources produced by G3 Ministries, would you consider donating to support us? Even a few dollars helps us to continue to publish free curricula, articles, podcasts, video resources, and more. Visit g3min.org slash give or open the G3 app to give a one-time or monthly donation. Articles from G3 Ministries Does Revelation 5.9 prove that all kinds of cultural expressions will be in heaven? Written and recorded by Scott Annual. A passage often cited by evangelicals to prove that every cultural expression is legitimate, since people from every nation will be admitted into heaven, is Revelation 5.9. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe, and language, and people, and nation. These same four terms appear also in chapter 7, verse 9, 11, 9, 13, 7, and 14, 6. Here John uses four terms related to ethnic identity. But it is important to recognize that John uses the terms not to emphasize cultural distinctions between various people groups, but rather to signify all peoples without national or cultural distinctions. For example, Mounts states of the terms in this verse, quote, It is fruitless to attempt a distinction between these terms as ethnic, linguistic, political, etc. The seer is stressing the universal nature of the church, and for this purpose piles up phrases for their rhetorical value. In other words, terms like ethnos, nation, phileo, tribe, glossa, language, and laos, people, do not refer to the culture or behavior of people, but rather to the people themselves, and ethnic distinctions among people in heaven will be absent. MacLeod summarizes common definitions for such ethnicity-related terms. Quote, 1. The word tribe, fule, denotes a group bound together by common descent or blood relationship. In the New Testament, most references are to the tribes of Israel. In Revelation 5.9, the word includes the redeemed from the Gentile world, which also includes tribal groups. Bauer, Arndt, and Ginrich say that phile means, quote, a subgroup of a nation characterized by a distinctive bloodline or tribe. Two, tongue, glossa, refers to a people group distinguished by their language. Three, people, laos, speaks of a race that is a body of people with common cultural bonds, a people group. Four, nation, ethnos, means a body of persons united by kinship, culture, and common traditions. Unquote. Indeed, the New Testament perspective on ethnicity seems to be that of eliminating ethnic distinctions rather than highlighting them. The use of another term related to ethnicity, Helene, Greek, illustrates this point. According to Paul, in Christ there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. Galatians 3.28, Colossians 3.11, and 1 Corinthians 12.13. Rather, all are united into one newly distinct body. These examples of the use of terms related to ethnic identity by New Testament authors indicate that the terms signify distinct groups of people that unify around common heritage, geographical location, language, and or custom. Culture, as defined by contemporary anthropologists, may be one of the elements around which an ethnos unifies, but an ethnos is not culture itself. Similarly, filet is not lineage, it is a people united by lineage. Likewise, although glossa is used to specifically designate languages, in these cases it is used metaphorically to signify people united by a common language. In the same way, laos and ethnos identify groups united by politics or culture, but they do not equal culture itself. Thus, while it is certainly possible and even probable that lots of different kinds of cultural expressions will be present in the worship of heaven, there is no scriptural proof of this. 
And there is certainly no proof that all cultural expressions will be there. For one thing, it is at least instructive to note that at least one aspect of cultural diversity is eliminated in this heavenly picture. Their clothing, Revelation 7-9. All of these people from various tribes, peoples, and nations are wearing the same thing, white robes. Where is the cultural diversity in that? So while I would never assert with certainty that there will be only one kind of musical expression in heavenly worship, the fact that all people are wearing the same thing at least allows for that possibility. I should also quickly say that I have no idea what the worship will sound like. My guess is that it will be distinct from anything we know here on earth, but that is only a guess. You can read this essay at g3min.org.